but could have Slark here or what else? What else? Their we boxes saw, uh, here Juggernaut's also. a classic always, but. Are these just the heroes that you guys have been seeing so far? Juggernaut, no. I'm, we're just thinking of Magnus and oh, Power okay. Synergy. Yeah. Really. PA has been one we have seen a bit. PL, yes, yeah, of course. Sure. So a lot of yeah. the time, like when you're thinking about picking PA or Jug, um, like PA is kind of hard to run into this lineup of Immortals because PKB doesn't necessarily feel super good against Fiend's Grip when you, you have a couple of ways to stop it, but later on in the game, you're not really going to be able to, I think, high ground with the heroes that they currently have. And that's kind of been the constant theme in it as well. Is that you pick really strong laners, but you don't necessarily have the ability of going high grounds yeah. early into the game. So having a hero like PL gives you what we call like a, a hard win condition. Right now, nothing on the side of Immortals can deal with it in any way whatsoever. And it's also a fourth pick. So Immortals have some time to adapt, but I do kind of like uh, EG's draft. My, my one, I guess, critique on it would be that their support cast offers not really any sort of guaranteed catch. How do you start a fight is, is basically yeah. like the game. It's and really no right now, lockdown. Yeah, it's, it's going to be walk up to tower, hit tower, or your last pick is going to... Right now, their only actual stun is, well, I guess, our two ultimates, RP as well as yeah. uh, Supernova. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not necessarily a super bad thing because they have one more pick to fix it. Yeah. And from what you were saying, I'm guessing the last pick's probably going to be Sumail Zero. So they can, they can pick something that can... Oh, Star fights in that regard. This hero right here has been the one that stood out. In you also, when I was casting Southeast Asian Opens, uh, the team with the Ember Spirit tended to win well. I think he's got a pretty good win rate, and I think it's just because it's like one of these heroes that you can play super fast, can start fights uh, in a way that um, I feel like doesn't really require that much yeah, it's commitment not commit from you. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that also, I think it's a good matchup Five against Phantom Lance Spirit is the game. It can be. It's just very active. I, there's a really big emphasis. Again, I don't know how it's been in the NA qualifiers as much because we're asleep by now. But yeah. when uh, the games that we've cast, it's usually the team that has the slower cores, as in the ones that take longer to come online, typically just lose the game. Like, like any time you pick a hero, we've seen Spectre. It's, I think it won one game in the qualifiers. And then every other game has just been stomped. Morphling has lost a handful of times as well. So you just pick this hero, Ember, who goes in an almost isolated 1v1 in every game because people are doing 2-1-2 all the time. Yeah. And you don't really have a lot of horrible matchups. And considering that they've picked it now, there is an opportunity for it to be counterpicked. We've also seen it lane swapped into safe lane. So maybe Immortals have the same idea. Maybe yeah. they've been watching some of these. Kind of a subtle thing, too, is that, you know, with the Phoenix pick, the Fire Spirits can be annoying for some of these right-click cores. But Venomancer and Ember Spirit aren't necessarily heavily relying on that. They have their spells to take care of damage, so... Kind of a workaround in that sense, too, but you know, the lack of lockdown is also what scares me for EG against the Ember Spirit. If I talked about Huskar final ban. That's a good ban. Yeah. yeah. So when we here. talk about, like, how do we start a fight, a good way to start a fight is a Huskar hitting your tower, and four magic damage heroes go, how do we kill Huskar? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're forced to either commit or... We saw Huskar once, at least that I can recall, it, we, it was probably the most dominating game we had. At the Optic Ten versus Leviathan, I think. It, uh, and also very good in the Ember Spirit match. Five seconds remaining. Final pick for Immortals. Again, it really depends what that Venom answer is going to be, isn't it? Because Night Soccer could be an offlane. That's where we've seen him more lately. Will that mean Venom 4, or is that going to be a Venom 1? I like Venom better. Against I like. PL? I don't know. Seems kind of... EG's turn Leaf to Presence. Oh, oh yeah, there's, <laughs> there's the Spectre that you're talking about there, Jurassic. So, the, the late so they, late they get one, one fast core, one slow core. Yeah. So one... Like creates the space for the Spectre to get the farm that he wants. And during the late game, uh, Spectre is going to definitely put a hindrance on heroes like Magnus and Skyrath. They really the one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about Ten is uh, and safe lane more. Gale, Purgeable now, obviously. Uh, Doppelganger, not really going to be towards build. Um, and there's a couple of heroes that kind of I don't know about deal with it in the early stage, so I'm just wondering like what the Venom is going to be on. I guess you just pair together with the Night Stalker and go Poison Touch and try and yeah. Touch I mean, Veno Night Stalker lane is still pretty. Yeah, it's it's very strong, and I guess the Doppelganger having it a spell. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to put the Bane with the NS or the Veno instead. Because typically, the like what lane do you want to help? That's the the Specter lane. The Specter right. lane is the one you want to support. So in my opinion, Bane is probably the better lane support for him. Maybe the Venno does go the word build, maybe he doesn't. I'm kind of leaning for no, just because you want kill potential. Against a Skywrath, for example, if you land a Gale, the hero just falls over. Yeah. It's NS. Okay. 
Storm versus Ember matchup is what we get yet again. Sumail versus MP. Final pick Storm. What do you think, Dakota? Sumail, like Storm. I mean, each team now have a slow core and a, and a fast core to kind of get into the fight. Uh, is this, I mean, is Spectre good say... enough to break the egg and such? Is the egg going to cause a lot of chaos in these fights? That's, That's a good have point, actually. Yeah. For it? it depends how the engagements kick off. Yeah. I mean, Spectre could haunt, it could ruin Magnus's initiation, but if a Mag you know, Magnus gets the upper hand, jumps in first, then Phoenix can set up a wonderful egg in the backdrop while Sumail's jumping around. I don't even know who you focus if you're immortals on this one, the upper hand. I mean, you definitely want to, in the mid game at least, Silence is going to be either put on the bird, uh, the Phoenix, or it's going to be put on Sumail. Like, those are the two, those are the heroes you want to silence. Mm -hmm. Take away Storm's mobility, he's dead. Take away the ability to egg. Phoenix dies, and that hero definitely offers the the most amount of team fight minus like a mag having blinked that. So th those would probably be my my priority targets if yeah. I were immortals. I just feel like EG have a lot more like oh you're focusing on one guy we have a, a Magnus to jump in or a Sumail to jump in or a Phoenix egg delay in the back while immortals it's like oh you jumped our Spectre you know maybe Ember will jump in but everyone else it's like they better be there or. You know they're going to be lacking a lot of mobility. I guess I'm just saying EG have more mobility to get to a fight and kind of you know Prepare turn things around even if they get jumped. Yeah, I can definitely see that. It again, it, this patch for me is very heavily lane dependent. And sometimes what happens is like if you look at Immortals lineup, and we saw this in the EU region like not even a couple of hours ago. There was a game where they they had a Spectre and they also had a Huskar. So the Huskar was the one who was pretty much pushing the tempo for his team and, and creating space for the. For the Huskar push ended up failing like one or two. And then all of a sudden, your Spectre's not quite r online. So there's like this five to ten minute gap where that hero is going to need to be able to farm up another item, whether it be Radiance or Manta style Diffusal or what have you. So it's it's still going to be up to Immortals, I think, to, to put face here and, and get space for that hero. What you were saying, Breaky, is that this is an important game. Yeah. Again, EG are expecting to win every game moving forward if they want to remain at the top and get into the playoffs. Immortals, a team who. I'm sure would love to surprise a lot of people. I know oh, they've yeah. been in the dark, but they're hoping to be like the Bane and just show up and <laughs> take things over and be the ultimate, you know, big rival into that top four yes, position. It's, it's definitely potential. Anything could really happen still in these uh, groups of the NA region. And yeah, for me, the Evil Genius lineup, I go back to what I talked about when they first started the draft. And this is a mix of because of being that two and three record, I think, but also a newer roster of sorts still with Fly and S4 joining. It's a very comfortable lineup. You look at who's playing what. These are all very comfortable heroes for them. Fly, meanwhile, taking some harassment. Dubu running after him. I love him. He's looking, he's looking pretty dead to me. uncomfortable, yeah, actually. Fly dead. is probably dead. Uh-oh. Dubu picks so, up. Move void used. Uh, is Milo dead? Well. Uh, no, he's fine. So... I, I actually think I like the Immortals draft more, uh, but I think that EG is the better team, and I think that they're probably going to win this game, but uh, I'd be a little bit concerned about it. Um, I, I certainly don't think it's going to be easy. Uh, Smell needs to really start taking off, and I think it's a pretty good matchup against Spectre in a lot of ways. Like, you can shut him down early on, but the X Factor is going to be MP for Spirit. I feel this is a three item game for Storm Spirit. He needs Kaya, Orchid, BKB. And then his game becomes very, very simple. But until that point, there's a lot of ways he can die. And that's going to be the time in which Immortals need to make their mark on the game. BKB over the Lincolns, you think? Oh, absolutely. And when you're against Ember Spirit, Night Stalker, and Bane, if you don't have a BKB, you're going to have a sad time. Yeah. You get hit by one Searing Chains, and you don't have a way to dispel yourself, you are dead. Worth it to even go the Yules first? Um, I think that... More often than not, you're probably better off just going for the standard Treads Kaya and then deciding. Sure. Because the Orchid gives you the the presence on the map. And I think that's what they're going to need because Artor is playing the, the hard one, he's playing the peel. So Sumail is going to have to be the one going around the map looking for kills. And in that regard, I think that the Orchid plays better into that style than going for something like a Yules to just play it, you know, quote unquote safe. I know it's early, but CS wise, EG is dominating right now in all three lanes. Magnus leading the way overall on 9 and 3. Storm Spirit though 9 and 2 against a 3 and 1 Ember Spirit. Aye, 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 that's not good. As, oh, that was actually crit. Okay. <laughs> that's a tier 2 tower. That's a. Huh. Oh, he's dead. 
yeah, curious it, somewhere why he was there. Guy getting frisky, loves to put those arcane bolts out, even if it means <laughs> diving through to tier two. I suppose, yeah, he was just trying to survive uh, that whole time, just I simply missed it. Space, I suppose. The mag is in control of this top lane. S4 is going to have a nice early burst of farm. Not sure if it's like a straight to blink kind of a game or, or what. I actually have not seen too much Magnus. I know you guys are talking about using Magnus all the time, but yeah, I've not seen any the, Magnus. The build in EU that we've been seeing, okay, he's, oh, he's got Jeez. six. All right. Yeah, but still, one more. Point level two. Yeah, not in time though. So we've been seeing the people are buying Vanguard and or Hood. Like whatever yeah. uh, amount of, di like whatever damage output the enemy team has, that's okay. what you itemize for. Okay. And then you go blink after. So they still get that like one utility. The yeah, they in. they right. typically because uh, Magnus has a 200 health ten at level ten, and then you put a Vanguard on top of that, you have 2,000 HP at level ten with that item and your talent. But would you say this is a pipe game, Venomancer? Uh, I would say yeah, I would say Hood into pipe yeah, over okay. Vanguard. So maybe put it in the Hood into Blink. We'll see what he goes though. Yeah, Bevy, he's, he's trying to survive, but we're skill for EG. And I mean, it's definitely. I don't know if they're going to do that for sure, but that's just what people have been building. And they, we've seen a lot of Magnus. I, I, I believe we've seen it, again, S4 a couple times played, and I want to say he usually goes that Vanguard like you're talking about. Again, this game specifically, maybe the Hood would have make more... That utility item, as we're calling it, for, than the Blink. Probably similar here, but again, S4, he's having a fantastic time at the top lane. Now with a kill on top of that, also middle lane. Ember's catching up a little bit, but Sumail's still winning it. Yeah, first night's going to be relatively important here for Immortals. They need to try to find at least a handful. Uh, and, like, I, I I think that they need to rotate out the next soccer to do it. They're like, already moving in. You you look at, like, the Phoenix and the Doppelganger PL, like, there's no way that they find a kill on those PL leveled up and stuff. Kinda He's tough. holding his points. Oh, there you go. Picks up Sunray level 2 with those points, Velo. will take some good damage as a result, but be fine. Dubu using that first night time comes back in. He's only level 2 himself, though. Not the scariest threat, necessarily, and Arteezy sees that. One Jesus little ground. spirit, and suddenly the right clicks are not going to yeah. come as hard. Nice to have the bird as your little guardian angel there, but uh oh, oh now you don't have anything else to offer. The PL's in trouble. Okay, or you can just get silenced. <laughs> That was such a value skill right there. Yeah. Holy crap. I didn't even notice he had that at level 2 initially, but yeah, he did not go Hunter in the Night. He actually went the Silence instead. No, he just hit 3 and skilled the Silence. Pretty sure. Oh, well, no, because he, he? Did, Yeah, no, he did not have its passive when he got the kill there. Oh, okay, okay. So he was 1-1-0. One, one, yeah. Nice. Magnus dead top lane meanwhile, too. Uh-oh. Hunter in the Night. Yeah. So, using that first nighttime Draskill, as you mentioned. Yeah. The kills are important for sure, but it's... Also, equally important to note that the CS is still drastically in EP's favor. Yeah. And we, we talk farming. at length about this on uh, the EU games, but a lot of the time, the early kills really just don't mean that much. I mean, last game was like 22 to 2 or whatever it yeah. was, and it I mean, still that didn't feel was, commanded. That no. one was extreme. Okay. I mean, they were just farming, though. It was just like, oh, you caught, you got us, but we're going to get right back in the lane, and right. we are, you know, very skilled, and we're just going to continue to CS and CS and CS. Sometimes it's about how you die, too. Like, say you immediately TP back to a lane, and then you die. That's an impactful death, because you have to walk all the way back. But sometimes if you just die, and you're, like, low HP or whatever anyway, and you TP back right away, it's not... It, it keeps you down for, like, 50. Oh, right oh, yeah. He's possibly uh, dead. Shockwave in sweet. one. Oh, nice nightmare. It's not going to matter. Much nuke coming out for the Skywrath Mage. Febby holding his ground against the Skywrath with the Nightmare up, but only so much damage he can do himself, of course. I think he took that Nightmare on purpose. Because he didn't want to tank the tower. Oh, good point, he yeah. done more damage. A helpful Nightmare there. Still took some damage, of course, but yeah. he survives. So Venom answered this game somewhat under Farn, but, you know, trying his best. In fact, they're going to go for another kill on Phantom Lancer. That five-second silence coming out. The nighttime, but this time with a Sunray heal, especially. No chance. He's fine. But yeah, Venomancer, what kind of Venom build is this going to be? Is it maybe the more like the Blink, the Veil even would be pretty good to hear? Honestly, I don't really see a lot of Venom. I'm not sure what his, his itemization path is going to be. But veil seems pretty strong in this game. Yeah, Veil is okay. Um, but again, if S4 does go for the Hood straight into Bite build, that's going to feel... True. It's not going to feel great. I kind of foresee the Venom having a hard time keeping himself super relevant in this game. I'm super curious how he itemizes, because if you just make his poison better, like Andy was saying, I feel like they'll he just mitigate it out. Yeah, I was thinking Helm of the Dominator with that Ring of Hell. Yeah, push, side push, ways to create space. I mean, yes. Venomance is always annoying like that. If you jump him and finally bring him down, he may have got Poison Nova off, and you're just going to be weak and wounded, have to go heal. Yeah. And he 
He just kind of creates that bit of time and space for the rest of his team. It could also be a hood into fight for his own team. They have a Phoenix and a Sky that they're playing against, so he it could be get awful. Force, I guess, against Sky. Also, you want to get out of Mystic Flare or yes. away from PL. These are all the items that Ring of Health can build. Yes. No, Ring of Health doesn't build for us. That. <laughs> yeah. Come on, boys. It's a Ring of Ring of Regen. Okay, for later. You pass the test. Good job. <laughs> RTZ. He's uh, he's not as successful as the other cores on his team, but he's still doing fine. And advantage of the slight pull off to the side as Febby goes down top lane. Looks like there's even a rotation here from Night Stalker, but Febby's the one that falls. He got a little ahead of himself. Yeah. Ate the bad end of an Ancient Seal Shockwave <laughs> all of his life. This lane is very spam heavy. And I like the fact that S4 opted to go like for the immediate arcane boots. A lot of times we've been seeing mags go treads and stuff like that, but because he's he's with us such a, a mana dependent support, he's building the item to allow just the continuation of spam. It's good stuff. You know who else would get up arcanes to help him out in that department? Someone's gonna need to give that man. Hood is gonna be the choice for S4, so. Back to that discussion earlier. It's here. I really w I want to know what this Veno is going to do. Like, honestly, if I'm Veno in this game, I, I got a lot of question marks. I, I'm just like, <laughs> what am I doing here, boys? I guess it's sort of like, again, a lot of the heroes, like, Phoenix doesn't really care that much about getting Gale down. Dive away. EL doesn't really care about it at all. Storm can fall away. Even skewering out of there, like, the only hero you can really try and kill is going to be the Skywrath. And it is, like, some damage, but to me it feels more like his job is just like go into a lane, push it out, um, try and farm up, get utility items, play, and then eventually. The Veno Classic is just exist. Yeah. <laughs> get RP. <Exactly. laughs> Veno be there, get RP'd into the team, and oh, press R. Oh, now. look how slow it is. That poor Remnant. Uh oh. <laughs> Wanted to run. Slowly runs away as his master dies. Yeah, Simeon just simply dives on top, and at that point didn't feel like Ember could do much. And this farm for Simeon, 4,100 net worth. He's nearly 1,000 over anyone else in the game, and that's his teammate included. It's been a while since we've seen, like, a Sumail Storm show. We saw it yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. Ah. Oh. I mean, did he play, or did he actually do he, well? It was in one, I believe it was in one of their victories. Yeah, he did play. All right. Did well, but two. Two oh, wins, okay. right? Are they two and three? Is there that are what they are two and three, yes. Two and three. Ember, Look, top lane. Three and three here. Remnants oh, are ready. Really Great. Nice. Slide of fits as well as the chains. MP coming back in ah. with the Remnant to get the kill on a Skyrath. Fly doing what he can with the beam there, but it's not nearly enough. Look like for a stab away. You know, but yet, of course. Bane taking over middle lane. Meanwhile, double damage arena spawned. How's Spectre been doing? He's. Uh, we're seeing a lot of these casual hoods this game. I know uh, Phantom Lancer's also going for one. He needs it. it against that lane. Sky Mag with Arcane Boots? Oh, Yeah. That's a disaster lane to have a stick and a... No, uh. getting a little bit low. Instead, they turn to Sky Wrath with the initial Ooh. Nightmare. Sans put up on Ember Spirit, though. He's not expecting that Remnant away. He'll manage to get away in the end. Very close call, though. Those bottle charges. I see how much Sumail can abuse his lead. See, he is very far ahead. 1500 net worth lead attacks is substantial. PL and Spectre going at it here at the top lane, but now Skyrath rotating in and Royoya will actually use the hot to go elsewhere. In fact, to the bottom lane, maybe for a turn kill. S4. TP, a pretty good ability against these heroes. It's in Desolate right now, it's back on that. That makes sense. I don't really see how that top lane can go in for a kill. It's just Bane Spectre. He just wants to try to sustain as best he can in a really rough early game. Well, I'm a bit nervous here if I'm Immortals. The, yeah. the fast core Sumail is gonna, well, be fast. He's gonna probably pick up that Kaya, there it is, and then begin to go to work creating space for the PL. Immortals, their fast core is supposed to be the Ember, and uh, I don't I don't know. I don't see him really getting into the fights at this point and creating space for the Spectre. Yeah, all well, he's got uh, is a power threat's coming. Is that a sun? That is a, oh, that's a supernova right down there. <laughs> RP is only going to catch Venomancer, though. Nightmare initially oh, will save him. It's going to oh keep him alive for now, but no, he will be finished off. With the RK bolt coming through. S4, meanwhile, walking away. Not going to be enough for him, so the RP, not necessarily the most effective from S4. Ends up being a two for two. Spec died? Spec did die down here during that, apparently. Yes. All right, so Storm got him. Oh, that makes it a lot better. That does. Solo kill. But Ember, he starts to jump up the net worth now after that fight. 
Was talking about him. Yep, still trails an item behind where Storm is at the moment, but you're right, it does help a bit. They have this window where Immortals need to be... They need to find important kills and they need to be able to find an objective. Like, getting the safe lane tier 1 is fine, um, but you need to pressure. Like, when the Ember is, is capable of fighting, he needs to be out on the map. When you have Haunt and Fiend's Grip and stuff like that, you gotta go. Like, you can't. Hesitation in this game is gonna be a killer if you're Immortal. Or EGR, they're like, nobody's going down there right now unless they're coming in. Top. Nice. Oh my god. There's All no right. support nearby. This should be a kill. Silence right after, if anything. Yeah, silence, no doppelganger. The brain sap. That's a level 4 brain sap. That's plenty of damage. So it doesn't help against that, boys. No. So but nice Grip finds. is down. And uh, we'll see if EG go on the offensive here. It's something Storm's not going to have to worry about for a little bit. Yeah. He's and looking for a kill bottom. Ah! Uh, right. oh, From downtown. Chris died. <laughs> so Mel will finish it indeed. The Kobe! Oh, the range hack too good. There is one kind of silver lining for Immortals here, is that EG's lineup is not very good at killing Roshan. So even if they are like semi ahead, they're they've only they're one for one on towers, so they've both taken each other's safe lanes. But for the most part, EG will not be able to like straight up end the game against a Spectre lineup unless some really bad stuff happens for Immortal. So yeah. they have to take like a blunder of a team fight and just get wiped or something like that for and something else, so late game specter is always a thing it's always something you gotta Benno be concerned about in the middle lane is probably dead oh easy mill's going yes. oh no he's already got one part of the orchid i think it's safe to say he's taking advantage of this lead oh yes he definitely is this is about oh, as comfort man. as it gets for sumail still, still some does... nightfall though mortals to do work they find him he doesn't have, have a way haunt. to deal with the uh chains either Silent comes afterwards, so he's got to rely on his team to be there to back him up if he's set Flint. Yeah, they have the tools. RP's back now, too, so. Uh oh. oh. They Silent's spotted the first Batman. on Night Stalker. Yeah, they got him out first. MP still chasing Remnant, oh, and the RP it. is finally going to come out, Catch the Spectre, as he haunts in Supernova down. From Fly, it looks like it is going to be activated. MP decided to walk away. Dude pops a darkness. He cannot fly away in time, though. He takes a stun. And so did the Spectre off to the side. It finishes him off. But MP now resetting. He's going back in. Femi nearby with the Brain Sap on top of that. S4 heal. Feel the burn. Double kill for MP. Meanwhile, Arteezy finally joins the fight. Spirit Lance thrown out. That'll be just distraction, if anything. If he can hold him here, back. Sumail will TP back in. We'll have that. But he'd been out of the fight for a little bit. Yeah, he did not have any mana to start that fight. Yeah. Man, oh, I, but me. I think that Dubu actually might have found that kill oh. as they chase. He wants it. He, he wants that kill. Did he, did he overextend though? Yes, yes he, he did. did. Down goes yeah. Sumail. <laughs> and now they're going for more on Immortals. The Phantom Lance gets locked down. Oh by the Fiend's Grip Evil Geniuses. I gotta say, oh, that, no. that seems like a little bit of throw to me. Double kill for MP. Sumail now calls for help. That's not gonna work. I don't feel like that was a fly call right there. <laughs> just make that <laughs> jump in the mid lane. He was just like, that I'm back, boys. Let's go. That went from a, a very reasonable trade, like even if it was a one one for two, you got the Spectre, and you lost the support and an offlane, and then Sumail's like, hold hold my beer, <laughs> and then just... Hold my beer, boys. Gives him, <laughs> gives him that free kill. That was yeah. definitely questionable. And now the game is pretty much neck and neck there. And Skyroth is dead. Sky and now it's not. <laughs> so the Ember Spirit is now catching up, which is a problem. At first, yeah. I kind of was wondering why he decided to go bots, especially against a Storm that had such a good early game. Because, you know, he's going to have an early Orchid, right? And because the storm timing on the orchid is going to be so fast, you're not going to have an item to save yourself from that. But if Sumail's going to fall in like that, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah, and exactly what we're talking about, right? Like, it's they have a couple of different disables that actually just destroy Storm Spirit if he's not in a position where his team can help him. That was just hubris. Yeah, like, exactly. He, the first jump, it's like, okay, not going to get him. Jump back, boys. But oh, he's just like, I can just do it. If I go a little bit further, I'll be that much further from my team. But he's Getting hungry. That. Again, this can he help. This more can help. MP. This is deep. MP goes down. Velo. He's out he of mana. He bops a poison he's over KTP? though. He's no. out of mana. He is dead. And that's, I mean, he got 950 gold for that kill, by the way. Yeah. So that's probably that worth was, it. For the gold, it was probably worth it. Yeah. He seems to think it's worth it. I mean, if that's morale, then I guess that helps even more. <laughs> it does, you know? It's like... He also gave away the award there. If you feel like it's a worthy trade, then you're still... You're still feeling good. Why? Well, that's... I, I mean... I was taking some damage himself from the creeps, but... Yeah, he's saying hello to the Spectre. So, the other thing I was trying to mention before Sumail went crazy was that in the mid lane there... Uh, when they were going in on the, the Supernova, um, I think Dubu thought that he could take it down with like a whole little bit of help from one. 
but it actually turned to daytime, and so he didn't get the attack mm. speed anymore off the back of it because supernova. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that interesting little buff. MP also oh, bailed on him super hard. He had a haste, and he's yeah. like, "Peace, dude. I'm out of here. <laughs> you're on your own." Yeah, you got to be all in committed and as a team if you're gonna do that. So. Yeah, once the egg not. gets another level, I don't. It's gonna be real tough for immortals to, to break it if they want. I mean, unless they focus it. But then if you're focusing that, then you're not focusing the PL, the storm, yeah. Magnus. So the egg could be a problem later on for sure. It's a good Phoenix game for those yeah. reasons exactly. Like when you don't have anyone who buys like Manta BKB to dispel that fire spirit. They saw the smoke, I want to say. In fact, Phoenix is just going to dive in right off the bat. Oh, MP's here in chain zone. They're going to get the kill on Phoenix before he gets Supernova. Due to the silence, Velo, he's trying to tank up against Sumail. Has that hood popped on top. And Duke is running away. As it's nighttime, he pops the shot at the last second. RTZ can't finish the job, but the shockwave will help get the job done. Strong they do lose again. Storm yet again, though. Meanwhile, down here by himself in his own fight. So looking pretty good for Immortals. MP did he overextend. Ancient Seal silence. The answer is no. He'll be fine. Crit also getting low. Ryoyo wants to finish the job, but... Again, he's not the most farmed yet, not worth overextending, he says. Go back to farm, but that's, uh, I feel like it was a bit of Castro's Curse, guys. We talked about 4-0 and 0 Samael and how he was definitely making use, and he has, he's been 1-3 in three since then. Still top yeah. of the net worth to his credit, but yeah. I thought they were still going to have a decent time there since they put their silence and allowed their disable on the Phoenix at the initial part of it, but they just split the fight right in half and put a lot of focus onto Sumail, and he was alone. There was a lot of uh, miscommunication, I feel, because at the beginning of the fight, he killed, or they killed the Phoenix really fast, but Sumail was committed to a completely different hero than the rest of his team. Like, he was on the right side of the fight, everyone else on AG was on the left, and they ran to chase towards Shrine, and Sumail continued to stay on the one target, like, continually balling in and using his entire mana pool, so... Yeah. If anything, that just shows uh, lack of communication between the players. Yeah. Jumps are so long that he ends up having not much mana pull to work with. Once it he was like commits. four jumps in a row, yeah. and not <laughs> you don't have that much mana yet. Yeah, his you can tell he's like been. thirsty for when he has the items to back up these big boy plays for sure. I mean, it, it, it is sort of the mentality that I feel like you kind of want in a, in a way. From, like if if he gets that kill and gets out, then it's like you know that's the highlight play going the other direction. It's just that it's like making sure that you do get out. And now it's been this really rough time period where him where he wants to be able to finish off this orchid. And it's how long has he had the two Bolivian stats, and it just keeps on being delayed ever so slightly. Uh, he's close now. Yeah, and it's honestly, have it. twenty minute Kaya Treads Orchid is not the worst timing. It's still the highest not worth in the game by yeah. a pretty deep margin. And he has the level, so he gets the talent now for four hundred life. Four hundred yeah. life is going to help a lot in <laughs> yeah. these That'll fights. Help the way he's playing, yeah, for sure. So you know, this could be a turn him back around for. But for again, it's, it goes back to the other thing we said too. It's a three item storm game. So after the Orchid, once he gets BKB. He is free to pretty much do whatever he wants. On the other side of it, you do have MP oh. now having the Yules. Yeah, I just saw that too. Yeah, the Yules is great. It's a protection against the storm. They do have more than one silence, and you can actually get RP out of your own Yules if you're not careful. So there are some downsides to it, but yeah. it is a necessary evil. Now later, if they realize that they're just going to have a big bad PL to deal with, the Yules might not feel so crazy good. But yeah, he's going to have to go back for like Maelstrom or something. Uh, but he's like, I gotta deal with the first boss right now. Yep. Sumail, in a way to survive. But let's not forget about Arteezy. He's now second yeah, exactly. in that war. His defusal finished. He's a thousand more gold saved up. He's obviously gonna become more and more of an issue, too. Yeah, it's PL, it's the PL factor, the sleeping giant kind of a thing. Ooh. Going in, Villa jumped. Oh, what? Oh, that was a misclick. He TP'd. He jumped in and TP'd. What? He missed something else, anyways. The RP helps finish him off. Arteezy, he's gonna fan and rush forward onto Bane, try to survive. Doppelganger away. Can they find the real one? Arteezy for now. He is fine. Oh. Siri Chase, no, they kill the illusion, but they're gonna be able to kill up PL. No. Oh my what? God. What? 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 Oh. Oh. Are they you got, kidding? They think it's an illusion. They think it's an illusion. He walks what? away. Meanwhile, Nine Stalker's gonna fly away with the silence on him, but the Glimmer Kid helping to keep him alive. I cannot believe I just saw that. Arteezy even thought they he figured, was dead. They figured he was probably just totally somewhere else. Like, maybe, maybe that he was playing possum the and they fell play, for it. The next label play. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Oh no. I can't believe they didn't see that. Yeah. They, they had the Night Stalker up there too, right? So they had night vision. They would have seen him run away. Like, because all the illusions were so low HP at that point that they just instantly die to any damage. So, yeah, wow. I can't believe they didn't just kill him there. Well, w without that kill, it's definitely a victory for EG. Right? And now they're. I mean, they've been thinking about Roshan for a while. There's no vision whatsoever on the map for Immortal. 
so they're going to do that. Haunt is definitely on cooldown. That was used the previous fight. Again, Radiant's still not even finished on Spectre, so not it's, much to worry It's not here. the fastest rush. Yeah, they're still going to uh, head over that way. Oh, Sumail wants to check out who's on the high ground. Nope. They got vision, it looks like. They just blow up the nice. uh, Night Stalker. Kill. Sumail's back. That's a huge one. That'll they... secure it, yeah. No Haunt. I don't think Immortals have any way of fighting this now. How about, yeah, we're, so we're talking about that not killing Phantom, but how about the start? The Venomancer, he clearly misclicked there. Yeah, he literally I don't know. blinked and he TP'd. He must have had his inventory mixed up. Yeah. But he actually With swapped where his veil was on his uh, fourth position for him. I was going to say, the, <laughs> look for where the TP moved to, yeah. <laughs> and he <laughs> might have your answer. He didn't even poison over, did he? No. no. I think oh, he no. TP'd, and then his brain just like was like, wait, what? And then he died. Or he could have like. Stop to cancel TP. He's yeah. like, wait, wait, no, no! <laughs> I think Draskal's right, though. It's just one of those massive brain fights. You're like, did I just do that? <laughs> and you just die later, so. Okay, so Sumail's going the greedy route because he has Aegis. Instead of going BKB, he's going to go back for Bloodstone. It's, uh, right. It will give him a better late game, but it does leave him susceptible to dying some more. But with the Aegis, I mean, it's the best Aegis carrier in the game. So, in my opinion, at least. Hard to argue against yeah. that. Bloodstone has been. Suspect from what I've heard from a oh lot of people God. watching those uh, games, but uh oh. He's they dead? need to get in there and silence yeah, him. There's the Aegis use. Wow. Oh. RP on two, though. Watch oh. out the Mystic play. That's at least a kill on Bina, looks like. Skewer 4, Dubu will survive. Sumail comes back up, and he's ready for revenge. MP, Yules, gonna get out? Yes, Remnant away. He'll be fine. Do they lose two supports to kill the Aegis? What if he goes back for the BKB? So much for the Aegis on Storm Spirit, though. Knowing Sumail, he probably won't change his item choice. 2800, yeah, he's going for Bloodstone now. Middle tower is under that was no okay for Immortals, but uh, not going to get any easier EGR going. Move through and take Dyer's objectives to go along with it now. They continue to wait for the Radiance. That's that's where it's... And even with the Radiance, though, obviously it's still... You want more on top of that. Uh, what's his forehead right now? Item wise. Okay, he does have the pipe already. Yeah, the pipe finished. The Yule's next, even. I mean, this is where things do get a little bit scary, uh, the Radiance, because it's going to be breaking Blink Daggers. It's going to be causing a lot of issues. I mean, still, you've got Sumail, it's going to be a problem late game. But it's kind of like this sort of dual battle that goes on, right? Like, you've got the Spectre and the PL. Who is it that's going to get more farm going into the late game? Silence. Yeah, they're going to jump on him initially. Silence, as you mentioned. S4 running in again. No RP, though. Oh, wow, Villa just exploded there. He didn't get a Poison Nova off again. Bane dies as well. Supernova that will go off. It stuns up. That was... They catch Spectre. him. Spectre. Ooh. He haunted it on top of that with no Radiance. Yeah, that was a sloppy fight for Immortals, but EG will take full advantage of it. Uh, Velo is being greedy with his Poison Nova. He could have cast it, but he wanted to try to hit more than one hero. So instead of just hitting Arteezy, he was trying to get like three or four. And Chris was like, all right, you're just walking into my silence. So just threw it on him and he just falls over. And now EG could have capitalized, taking out Tier 3 Tower more than likely. Again, you're not fighting this. I guess they still have a Poison Nova, but he's not even up for 15 seconds. The thing about that is, I don't think that they, they can go high ground if you just leave that Tier 2 Tower to die, right? Like, did they really need to defend that? I think that they they were probably thinking if we get a Poison Nova off, even if we lose like a hero or two here, they, they won't be able to go high ground, at least. But it didn't work out because Vela wasn't able to get his spells off. MP the Yules. Oh He's going God. for the turn kill, actually. Sumail, this might catch him off guard. It looks like it does. No, he gets the ball ah. up the last second. Outplayed him. Galore Glimmer keeps up and kills Sumail. <laughs> Dubu comes in for the save at the last second. Yeah, without Dubu there, that probably is a turn kill. Good yeah, teamwork, that though. saved his life, yep. for sure. Now Hart on uh, Arteezy. Thank you, PL. I mean, we're just getting to the point where Sumail's going to hand things over to Arteezy. I don't know what the answer for Immortals is going to be to that. The supports move out to get a little bit of extra vision. They are at risk of being caught out. Now, this is the timing that we were kind of... When we talked about like a fast core and a slow core, the Spectre still really has yet to make any sort of a influence in this game at all. Because he doesn't have his one impactful item. I, I think he has his Radiance recipe coming out yeah. to him right now. But even just buying the hood... It made it take so much longer for him to get to a stage where he felt impactful that even with Sumail playing as recklessly as he has, now the Radiance doesn't really feel that effective because yeah. A, there's a pipe up on the Magnus. One of the cores has a heart. The other one's a storm. Probably not going to be locked down you know, that easily fights. And now it's like, okay, this timing is later, and now we don't really feel like we have a good way of getting ourselves back into the game regardless. 7,000 net worth lead, so most overwhelming, but 
Point being that it's just going to start snowballing more and more for EG, it feels like. Phantom Lancer will be fine, just harassing at the tower. While we're in this game, guys, by the way, quick reminder, the South American Grand Ooh. Finals are finally beginning oh, shortly yeah. here over on Beyond the Summit 2 channel. Uh, you can check it out. Blitz and Capitalist, they'll be casting it. That's the best of five. Pain versus SG. Spot the TI on the line. It's been a six-day qualifier, but two deserving teams in the end, so... That's going to be starting soon over on BTS2. Fiend's Grip, meanwhile, back to this one. Phantom Lancer going to be locked down to S4. He'll try to stop Whoa. it. Rudo on top of the on the PL, so he's still locked down, but in the back lines, Bane, he's having to deal with Samel. Samel is out of mana once again. Supernova going to be activated by Fly, forcing to run away. Finally, Poison Nova. That was a long distance Poison Nova, though. They will take out Night Stalker. Ember Spray, he gets caught by the Supernova explosion, and he'll end up falling. RP finally used to catch Venom Answer in the back lines. They're going to finish him off, too. Spectre, he's like, guys, I had to get out. Wait, I mean. I'm not sure what the game plan was there that led in with a Fiend's Grip onto Arteezy, but nothing else came of it after no. that. I mean, maybe more credit to EG to catch those backliners, but it's tough at this point for Immortals to be able to get the jump. The only jump kind of they got is a haunt to lead things in or something. It's very awkward, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. the Veno and the Spectre kind of fell flat for me this game. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's not completely over yet, but it's, it's looking like EG are in a very dominant position. It's the, way the, the way these fights have gone, it just it just doesn't oh, feel wow. like Immortals has, has much hope, and this is going to be even worse. Spectre pulled right back in with a Vortex. Stops his TP, kills him. He's dead for another full minute. That means a full minute of not farming once again with that new Radiance of his, and even falling further behind the side of Immortals. So EG, no doubt, played very well here in this game. So there's a, a really good thing to take away from a match like this when you see EG playing, you know, I said... Reckless, like Sumail was just going in like hard all the time, just looking for fights, looking for fights. Even though he was dying in kind of awkward ways, if you look at the way that EG played, they never took their foot off the gas a single second. True. Like every single time they were looking to fight, they wanted to contest, and Immortals felt like they couldn't always match the aggression that EG were throwing out because they didn't have another hero that could come to fights because they had Spectre. So imagine if it was another safe laner that could actually you know, be present in the game. I feel like that's where a lot of the teams are starting to fall behind now. Demel trying to finish this right here, right now in the back lines, being Glimmer Cape initially, saving him, but not for long. They say killing spree for Samael. They're out of Atos on Night Stalker. We're gonna get back to the Fallon, but of course EG doesn't want to dive that far. Storm Spirit, Fiend's Grip will hit him. Support from EG is late to get there. The Ember Spirit jumps in with the Remnants and they take him out. He's dead for 20 seconds due to the Bloodstone. Not the longest. They are gonna get the tier three. Yes, the Illusion will finish the job and now EG will retreat as a team. So, <laughs> And it goes back to what you're just suggesting. I mean, sure, it's a death on Storm Spirit, but I don't think EG's looking to let up the gas anytime soon. In fact, Arteezy wants to go back in. Dubu. Nice Nightmare save initially. Too many illusions, so. And he will be beat down the Empower buff also on Phantom Lancer. Arteezy helping him off. Out comes here. Velo. With that Poison Ova, Ryoyo, but he's just melting away. Not taking enough. That Hooded Appliance ain't going to save him most likely. And there you go. The security finished the job. Double kill coming out. It's all the Supernova go off in the back lines. Buyback galore. It just simply isn't enough for Immortals and... This could be the beginning of the end now for EG. By the way. Beginning of the end for Immortals. In favor of EG. Oh, okay. there, we there we go. Got it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I really feel like this is, well, another buyback. Another buyback. They're all buyback. Give it one last shot there, Immortals. One last little go. They can't just let EG walk away here. I mean, they might just die again, actually. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, this is no. your do or die for Immortals, which is mostly... Looking like a die, but let's see if they can get anything out of it. They're trying to put their focus on Dorteezy, but... That's a tough kill, though. Hard. It is. Makes it very they difficult. They make it, it, though. Another hood. He has it coming up in five seconds. Not in time. Okay, so they are going to kill him, actually. The kill streak stopper for Dubu. Going his way. Fly also. Nope. Yule saves him initially ah. on top of the Mystic Flare. Down goes Ember for the dieback. They do kill Phoenix, but obviously a massive cost once again. Dubu running away. The bolts are flying out. S fork. Lining up that skewer, puts him up with the yield, skewer set up. Kind of the most follow-up though, gets him over the ledge, however, as Nice Doctor did survive. That Glimmer Cape has been high value this game for Dubu. And they're gonna kill Skyrath. So Immortals simply delaying. Yeah, I don't even know. This, this, they almost actually clear them all up, don't they? Wow. Yeah, they got a, quite a bit of gold from getting Storm those kills. Even died there. It's important too, because they had spent what, four or five buybacks? That yeah, was, did, I think, yeah. almost everyone. Bring us uh, back everyone, yeah. So it's it's a very costly defense, and obviously they're still down two sets. Just uh, delaying at this point for Immortals, trying to keep themselves alive as long as they can. Yeah, I uh, I really liked what you guys were talking about there with the sort of 
making sure that you at least keep that one car farming. Like, the, one of the perfectly emblematic moments of this game is, like, Sumail is diving in there basically towards the fountain, you know, drawing a ton of attention. There's Ember triple remnants onto him to secure the kill. And while that's happening, Arteezy is getting the Tier 3 tower, and then they finish it off as it goes down. And it's not necessarily that either person is playing bad, it's that's the game plan. This core is going to draw attention, the other one is going to... Yeah, there's also something to be said for EG having two winning lanes, and one, like, even-ish, maybe. The only lane that they could be even theoretically losing is their safe lane, because they did lose Arteezy, what, two times, I think, in lane, just dying. But, again, that doesn't really stunt his farm as much as just having a Magnus and a Skywrath sitting against the Spectre, spamming spells, chasing this guy away from his Tier 1. Yeah. He had a way harder laning phase in the PL, regardless of how many times, you know, Ryoya died versus Arteezy. And I think that's... That's what really, like, breaks the game for Immortals, is that, okay, this Ember needs to do a ton. He's in an unfavorable 1v1 matchup with no one who is going to be able to help him except for maybe the Night Stalker, who can't really leave bottom because then the PL free farms, and you can't send anyone else down there. Yeah. So, you're spreading yourself really, really thin by picking a safe laner that needs to be babysat and still losing that lane, and then having a, a matchup in a 1v1 where that hero on your team needs to own, and he can't. You're giving him a, like a dead game, basically. A level 23 Storm Spirit as well, 23 and a half even, so this is gonna be a fast level 25 at this rate. Continues on further. Spectre, he's desperate. He's just gonna buy the Blade Mail at this point. Hope for the best, but I believe the Silver Edge is finished now. Yeah, on Phantom Lancer, so that dispersion ideally will be broken. Hey -o. S4, he's going deep. That's just in vain though, so won't overcommit. Uh, catch him. I mean, every hero counts when you're defending your base. Him being dead for 50 seconds is still pretty bad. Yeah, true. And no Bob actually know that. And obviously the middle, the bottom already cleared out. Let's go for the top, they say. Finish the job for sure. Against Immortals, Arteezy. Who do they get? They have the Age of Storm. Jeez. Um, well, he's also on Storm. <laughs> So you can play extra reckless now. Mr. Clear, Venomancer possibly could be there. Runs away, Supernova in the front line. Fly, that's definitely getting off. No one can try to run eggs. away. Immortals just trying to spread away the RP. Hit Spectre on top of the Supernova. Remember, if you die, you're staying dead if you're Immortals. And that'll be the case right there. Samil is getting low, but there's that Aegis popping back up. So the Poison Nova doing a fair amount of work, but as expected, not nearly enough. Spectre and Night Stalker down. They're going to catch up to Venomancer, and the GGs will eventually be called by Immortals. Well played by Evil Geniuses. Looks a little sketchy there, you know, with that initial dive from Sumail, dying and possible turn, but EG was always the better team this game. Yeah, their trap was solid. Uh, Immortals, they had some really awkward pieces that they together. I? I didn't really see what the Venom was supposed to do. I think they also early picked it, right? 